Okay, so I have a student who's asked a question about how to solve, or rather how to evaluate this limit. You can't solve it because you don't have an equation. You have to have two sides and a symbol in between to solve. Um, and we've only got an expression. We don't have an equals or an inequality, so we can only evaluate. So the first thing to notice is that x is approaching infinity. So we look at the inside here and we can see that as x goes to infinity, x cubed will go to infinity and one divided by something that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that approaches zero. So the first thing I can note is that as x goes to infinity, that means that one over x cubed gets close to zero. It never actually gets to zero because it never actually gets to infinity. Remember, infinity is a direction, not a number. So it's like saying go west, but not saying when to stop. You just go west forever and ever and ever. Um, so first off, we, but this is a limit. So it wants to know what is it getting close to as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the x value. So as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, one over x cubed gets smaller and smaller and smaller until the inside of this practically goes to one, because one plus something approaching zero is one. Now in the power, we have x squared. So as x goes to infinity, x squared goes to infinity. So as x goes to infinity, one over x cubed approaches zero. And that means that one plus one over x cubed, that approaches one. And we have that x squared will blow up and go to infinity which means that if I were to, in a sense, plug in idealistically the infinity value, I would end up with something of the form one to the infinite power. Now, there are several forms that are what we call indeterminate when we're looking at um, limits. So what are these indeterminate forms? Well, there are seven basic indeterminate forms, and I'm going to put a handout on to Blackboard so that you can uh, further understand what these indeterminate forms are. But basically, there are three power indeterminate forms. There are two arithmetic ones, and there are two basic ones. So that's seven total. So let's make a quick list of what these indeterminate forms are. So your indeterminate forms, basically, you have two basic types, and your two basics are zero divided by zero and infinity divided by infinity. And the reason being, well, there are different sizes of infinity. So looking at this one first, it sounds crazy to say there are different sizes of infinity, but there are because we know that the counting numbers and the integers are what we call countably infinite, and yet the irrational numbers like pi and the square root of three, those are also infinite, but they're not countable. There are uncountably many. So a, an uncountable set is bigger than a countable set, even though they're both infinite. I know that sounds crazy, but that's the way it works. So if these two infinities are roughly the same size of infinity, they could stop at pretty much any number you want. It could stop at 5, 10, 15,000, or 2. If the larger one is, however, in the numerator, and it's a larger size of infinity than the denominator, it will pull the whole thing to infinity. But if the larger of the two infinities is in the denominator, and it grows much faster than the one on top, then it will drive the whole thing down to zero. And there is something in your book that goes over the basic different sizes of infinity, but I can give you a quick example. Natural log, any log, is one of the slowest growing functions. I mean, it does go to infinity, but so slowly. So then natural log then does not grow anywhere near as fast, and we use this uh, double less than symbol to show it's growing much slower than, say, a polynomial like x to the n power. That grows faster than natural log. So if I have x squared over a natural log, it's going to go to infinity. 
But if I have x cubed over a natural, or wait, let me say that backwards. If I have natural log over x cubed, it's going to go to zero. So it depends on the size. x to a power then grows more slowly than, let's see what else, um, or exponentials. So this would be like e to the x. Those grow much faster. And then we actually have, um, let's see, what else? Factorials. Factorials grow faster than those. So n factorial. And then that's an exclamation point. It's hard to see the point. And then one of the fastest growing functions we know of is what are called tower functions, which have the form of some expression of x raised to a power, which also is an expression of x. So the base and the power both have x in them. So this is what we mean by different sizes of infinity. Now, these are the two basic forms. Why is 0 over 0 a problem? Well, thou shalt not divide by 0. Yet any other number divided by itself is 1. So that makes this indeterminate. So sometimes it approaches a number. Sometimes it goes to infinity. Sometimes it goes to negative infinity. And sometimes it doesn't exist. And then we have two arithmetic forms that are indeterminate, which would be, as we might expect, infinity minus infinity. If you have different sizes of infinity, you got to know which one of these is bigger. Or if they're roughly the same size, it could stop at any number uh, in the real number system. Or it could go to infinity or it could go to negative infinity. It's just kind of hard to know. And then we have another arithmetic form that is 0 times infinity. We don't know which way that's going to go. So 0 times infinity. Is it 0 or is it a number? Or Well, again, it depends on the size of the functions involved. So that's one of our forms. And then we have three what I call power indeterminate forms. And this is one of the power indeterminate forms. There are three of them. The one that I find most difficult to explain to students is basically the one we have here, which is 1 to the infinity. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times itself an infinite number of times is not necessarily 1. And the only way for me to really show you this is to give you two examples where it leads to two different values. And since it can lead to two different values, then it's not always 1. And that makes it indeterminate. And we're going to take a look at this one right here. But there are two other forms, and the two other forms basically are coming from this form right here. So remember that when you have a number divided by itself, if it had been the number 2 divided by 2, you could also have written it as 2 to the 1 minus 1, because the bases are the same, you subtract the powers. So our other two power indeterminate forms are 0 to the 0 coming from 0 divided by 0 and infinity to the 0th power coming from infinity divided by infinity. Okay, so that was a quick aside on indeterminate forms. And what we want to do now is we want to evaluate this one up here. We do have one of our indeterminate forms, so we're going to have to use L'Hopital's rule probably at some point. But in order to evaluate this, we've got to convert this power form into one of the two basic forms. The only two forms you can apply L'Hopital's rule to are these two right here. So, sorry, but these five won't work. So you've got to convert these five into one of these two. If you have a subtraction, you try to write it as a fraction so that it ends up as some form of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. If it's 0 times infinity, you take one of the two factors, just one, not both, and you divide it by the reciprocal of itself, which would give you one of these two forms here. If you have one of these forms, we have to apply a one-to-one -one function and its inverse, which basically means we have to do something and undo it. But in order for it not to get messed up, it has to be a one-to-one -one function. And since we want to get rid of these powers, since none of these forms have powers, that means that we need to bring the power down to the line. The only way to do that is natural log. How do you undo natural log? 
e to a power. So that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to apply natural log and then undo it by taking that thing to the e to that power. So what we're doing is e to the power natural log of, and then everything else is right here. Limit x goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x cubed to the x squared power. Okay? So I've applied a one-to-one -one function natural log and it's inverse. That means I did something and I undid it. So I've basically done nothing. These, remember, cancel out. That's one of our log properties and exponential properties and gives me back what I started with. But what I can do is this natural log, I can bring it inside the limit. Remember that limits, we have very few restrictions of what we can and can't do with limits. That's why limits are the most powerful of all the constructs in calculus. Give me a limit, a derivative, or an integral, and I'll take the limit every time. Because there are things I can't do with derivatives and things I can't do with integrals that I can do with limits, and this is one of them. So we're going to pull the natural log on the inside. And the E, by the way, is just going to tag along. Some students like to just do the natural log and leave off the E. And then at the very end, they apply the E. But that's a little risky in case you forget it. So now we have E to the power, the limit as X goes to infinity, of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over X cubed to the quantity X squared. Well, now that lets me take the x squared down in front of the natural log. That's just one of our natural log properties. So I'm going to do that next. So this gives me e limit x is still going to infinity x squared times the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x cubed. Great. I don't have a power anymore, so I'm out of this situation, but I don't know where I am. I don't think I'm here yet because I don't, I have a fraction, but it's inside the natural log, not outside of it. So basically what I need to do is I need to sort of plug in infinity again. So I look at this and I go, well, if I put infinity here, infinity squared is still infinity. So this gives me infinity. And then I look at this one and I go, well, what would happen here? Well, this would become 1 over infinity cubed. But I know from up here that 1 over infinity cubed goes to 0. Well, this goes then to the natural log of 1. But what's the natural log of 1? That's 0. So you'll notice that the form I've come up with right here is infinity times zero. In other words, when we convert it out of the power form of the indeterminate, it turned into one of these arithmetic forms, zero times infinity. This is common. Expect it. You're going to see it nine times out of ten. You're going to get out of the power, and you're going to get into zero times infinity. Now, how do we get out of zero times infinity? I said you got to pick one of these two, and you got to divide by the reciprocal of it. Okay, exactly what does that mean? Well, multiplying by 7 is the same as dividing by 1 seventh the reciprocal. Let me say it again. Multiply by 7 is equivalent to divide by 1 seventh the reciprocal. Now, I've got an x squared and I've got a natural log. Never move natural log. Let me say that again. Never move natural log. Natural log is the bully on the block. He gets to stay wherever he is. We're going to have to move the x squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this e limit x is going to infinity. I still have the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x cubed. This whole part right here is a block. It's one number if I knew what it was. It's one thing. Now I need to divide that by the reciprocal of x squared, which is 1 over x squared. And now what do we need to do? I need to check my form again.